Hey everybody, welcome to my first YouTube post. Over the past couple of months now, I've had a couple of requests from people to ask me to do a few tutorials or step-by-steps on some of the things which I do with my models. So I thought it'd be a good idea just to do a series of YouTube posts that uh, detail how I go about completing a model. So from the very first stage of getting the model through to the final presentation with the photos that you see on my blog. So I anticipate this is probably going to be a four or five stage uh, set of tutorials with the first stage detailing how I go about preparing the model, which includes taking it off the sprue, the thought processes I go through to magnetize the model, how I magnetize the model, and then get it prepared for undercoating. So let's get started and have a look at what you're going to need to complete the first stage of this particular build. Come and have a look. So what we're going to need to complete this build is obviously a Space Marine Landspeeder Typhoon kit. This is the complete kit with all the weapon systems that can be mounted on it. We're going to need some polystyrene cement. I really like the Tamir brand. Uh, it's very high quality. Comes with this great brush applicator so you can get the amount of glue at the location you desire very accurately. It's quite inexpensive too. We're going to need some super glue. I just like getting this stuff from the $2 shop. You can get about 10 of them for 2 bucks and uh, you know, if you screw it up, leave the lid off or whatever, you can just bin it and it's uh, certainly not going to make you worry about how it punched into your wallet. Some accelerator, this is great for super glue. Spray, the, spray this on super glue and the super glue sets instantly. We're going to need some uh, drill bits, a uh, one, one and a half and two mil drill bit. A nice new number one uh, handle hobby knife with a number 11 blade on it, nice fresh blade. We're also going to need some clippers, obviously, to clip the kit out. We're going to need some magnets. These here are rare earth magnets, and we've got some 2mm magnets here, and some 3mm magnets that we'll use through building this kit. We're going to need some magnet applicators. These ones here are just ones that I've made up myself on some polystyrene rod, and uh, basically one's at north and one's a south pole. I don't know which the arrangement is, but basically I've just got this little marker on here so that I know that this is the one that I use to apply magnets to the body or the hull of the model that I'm assembling and this is the one which I use to apply magnets to the weapon system which I want to connect to the model. We're also going to need some uh, poly polystyrene uh, rod here. This is 1mm uh, I believe from Evergreen. We'll need some uh, toothpicks. I use these toothpicks to, to mount small parts of the model onto for painting and to mount those for air painting I just use this um, polystyrene uh, material that I've got here and I just stick the toothpicks into it. We'll need some, uh, this is an epoxy putty, this is a millipud, I've been using this for years this stuff and I really like it. Uh, it lasts forever, it's very inexpensive, extremely strong and uh, I really like the yellow grey, it's just got a nice consistency, it comes in a few different consistencies and I've found that the yellow grey is the one which I like the most. And last but not least, we'll just need a, uh, a shaper for manipulating the, uh, the milli part on the model. So that is basically the items that we're going to need to start this particular stage of the build. So let's get into the, uh, the next stage, which is looking at the kit and how we're going to go about assembling it. Okay, so the first thing I do whenever I get a model kit that I want to magnetize is I just quickly cast my eye over the instructions for the kit now. Uh, Games Workshop or Citadel kits aren't the most complicated model kits in the world. They're fairly straightforward. Most of the time, in fact, you could even assemble them without the instructions. Uh, but for the sake of this uh, particular tutorial, basically what I want to do at this particular stage is just start to think about, firstly, how I'm going to assemble this kit because I don't actually assemble the entire model when I paint it. And secondly, I want to start thinking about how I'm going to go about magnetizing this. How do I have to modify the kit in order to get the magnets into the places that I want. The most complicated area that I'm going to have to magnetize on this particular kit is uh, the side of the, the land, land speeder where I want to attach the Typhoon weapon systems. I may not want to actually use the land speeder with the Typhoon weapons, so I may have to alternate between these two doors. So I'm going to have to work out a way to get these doors to magnetize onto the side of the hull of the land speeder. The second thing is I know that I'm going to have the, uh, the two crew members not inside the vehicle when I paint it because I want to paint the inside of the vehicle. I like painting the interiors of the vehicle. 
it adds just an extra element of uh, interest to the kit and also because iron hands are black space marines to have some contrast in amongst all of that black really helps to make the model stand out on the tabletop and lastly we actually get to the actual weapon systems here so we've got to contend with basically five weapon systems so we've got to be able to either have the typhoon uh, weapons on or off the kit We've also got to have the heavy bolter or multi-melter on or off the kit, and then finally the heavy flamer or assault cannon on or off the kit. And I can see right here with the heavy flamer and the assault cannon that it's mounted on some sort of uh, bracket which sits underneath the kit and what looks like there to be a searchlight or something like that. So I know that I'm gonna to have to have two magnets in this little bracket here. One, to attach the model to the hull of the vehicle, to attach this bracket, sorry, to the hull of the vehicle and another one so that the actual weapon system can attach to the kit as well. So I'll have a look at that part in a second because it looks like it's quite small, so it might be a bit tricky to see how the uh, the magnets go on there. And then with these two models here, the multi melter and the heavy bolter, I've got to work out a way to get those to magnetize onto that uh, that rail there and get them into the weapon, uh, into the user's hands as well. So it might mean uh, perhaps putting a magnet in the uh, the hands of the space marine and also where the actual uh, where the grip is on the weapon there and then we've got this uh, issue with these typhoon missile launchers here which we want to uh, somehow get those to attach to the side of the hull as well so we may have to make up some sort of bracket inside the the kit there so that the those little doors can attach uh, on and off depending on what configuration we might have the model in Alrighty, so let's now start unclipping the model from the uh, from the sprue. Okay, so what we're going to do now is just clip the model out of the sprue and uh, then start cleaning all the mold lines off of this kit. So I'm going to take everything off the sprue and then what I'm going to do is clean all the mold lines off it and also start you know drilling barrels and things like that. Now I'm going to spare you the uh, all the angst of watching me clip this thing out. But before I get started, I'm not sure what skill level everyone's at out there, but um, just a couple of things on clipping uh, model kits out. Always use clippers first off, and then go through with it when you're taking all the mold lines off, and use your number 11 blade to, to remove those little injection points. And always remember, when you're clipping uh, any part off, always make sure that the flat edge is facing towards the model. And always clip just one or two mils back from the actual injection point there. And the reason that we do that is so we don't actually damage the kit when we're clipping the uh, components off. Don't try and um, just clip the entire mold line off in one fell swoop. What you want to do is just leave a little tiny bit there so that you can come back with your model knife and get a nice clean cut so that that way there's, there's no divot or anything like that left once you've actually um, removed the kit. So what we do is we just come and uh, gently clip off the, uh, this is the hull here or the chassis. And as you can see there, there's a few little, the, the injection point there's left. And then what we want to do is then just come along with our, uh, our model knife and we're going to uh, just remove those. So I'm going to get on with this and, and clip all the parts off and we'll get on with the next stage. Okay, so I've removed all the parts that I want off the sprue for the kit, and uh, I've already identified a couple of parts that I want to replace from the standard kit. The first one is uh, the the unhelmeted Space Marine head. I really don't like putting uh, unhelmeted Space Marines on any of my model kits, so I'm going to give that one there the flick. And uh, I'm going to replace it with this one here, which is off the Land Raider accessory sprue. And he's just a pretty funky looking uh, head. He's got some sort of, uh, I don't know, target or something on the side of his head and a little antenna there. And uh, it's quite similar to the uh, to the standard head which comes with the kit as well. So it's got those little air intakes on the side and whatnot. The other thing which I'm going to replace is the two uh, Mark 7 breastplates off the Space Marine kits. They're fairly uninteresting and they're both identical. So I'm going to give those the flick and I'm going to replace them with a, uh, a Mark 7 chest piece and also the uh, chest piece from the uh, Space Marine Vehicle Accessory Sprue which has the, uh, the Mechanicus sign on the, on the breastplate there given that they're in uh, Iron Hands who have an affiliation with the, uh, the Mechanicus I thought that would be appropriate 
and also just with the shoulder pads as well. So it comes with four shoulder pads, obviously. Two of them I'm just going to uh, give the flick, and I'm just going to replace them again with the uh, the Space Marine vehicle accessory sprues uh, kit, one that has the Mechanica symbol on the side of it, and another one that's just kind of uh, a little bit interesting looking just to, to add a little bit of interest to the kit and make it um, a little bit more congruent with the rest of the army that I have. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is uh, remove all the injection points and also all of the, the mold lines from the kit. Okay, for the next stage, what I'm going to do is just drill out all the uh, all the barrels on the various weapon systems that we have here. So to do this, we're going to need a, uh, a 1mm bit, a 1.5mm bit, and a 2mm bit. What I really like doing uh, with weapons, particularly, uh, although this kit doesn't have them as bolters, I like to use a 1mm bit to, to drill the hole out, and that there is just what I use for a pilot hole. So, um, for example, here on the um, on the actual muzzle of the weapon, what I'll do is I'll go and use the one mil drill bit, and I'll drill a nice uh, one mil hole down in there. And obviously, I'll go and drill out all of the uh, the individual uh, barrels as well. But then, what I like to do is to get the one and a half mil, and just on the actual muzzle, go and drill it out with the one and a half mil. I find it just looks a bit nicer. Uh, it's it's got a it, it leaves a larger caliber for want of a better term, and uh, I find that yeah, just overall it's just aesthetically a little bit more pleasing to look at rather than just a uh, a smaller one millimeter hole. You do have to be careful though because um, like I just did then, if you uh, don't drill it out properly, you can damage the end. So you've just got to be a bit careful. I'll just have to tidy that up with a hobby knife. But um, once it's done, it'll leave a really nice looking uh, barrel there for the, for the kit to be filled out with properly. So what I'm going to do now is just go through and drill these out. Um, and uh, then we'll move on to the next stage.